Act One of The Maid's Tragedy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Maid's Tragedy by Francis Beaumont and John Fletcher. Dramatis Personae. Cleon, read by David Nicol. Strato, read by Algy Pug. Lysippus, read by M. B. Diphilus, read by Marty Chris. Melantius, read by David Goldfarb. Aspasia, read by Ariel Lipshaw. Armentor, read by Peter Bishop. Messenger, read by Marty Chris. Calianax, read by Andy Minter. Diagoras, read by Elizabeth Clett. The King, read by Bruce Peary. Evadne. Read by Elizabeth Clett. Cynthia. Read by Skylark. Night. Read by Avaí. Neptune. Read by Bob Gonzalez. Aeolus and Servant. Read by Barry Eads. Dula. Read by Beth Thomas. Lady. Read by Bev Stevens. Antiphila. Read by Avaí. Olympias. Played by Skylark. First Gentleman. Read by Marty Chris. And narrated by Elizabeth Clett. Act One. Scene One. Enter Cleon, Strato, Lysippus, Diphilus. The rest are making ready, sir. So let them. There's time enough. You are the brother to the king, my lord. We'll take your word. Strato, thou hast some skill in poetry. What? Think'st thou of a mask? Will it be well? As well as mask can be. As mask can be? Yes, they must commend their king, and speak in praise of the assembly, bless the bride and bridegroom, in person of some god. They are tied to rules of flattery. See, good my lord, who is returned. <laughs> Noble Melantius! Enter Melantius. The land by me welcomes thy virtues home to Rhodes, thou that with blood abroad buyest us our peace. <laughs> the breath of the king is like the breath of gods. My brother wished thee here, and thou art here. Uh, he will be too kind and weary thee with often welcomes, but the time doth give thee a welcome above this or all the worlds. My lord, my thanks. But these scratched limbs of mine have spoke my love and truth unto my friends more than my tongue e'er could. My mind's the same it ever was to you. Where I find worth, I love the keeper till he let it go, and then I follow it. Hail, worthy brother! He that rejoices not at your return in safety is mine enemy for ever. I thank thee, Diphilus, but thou art faulty. I sent for thee, to exercise thine arms with me at Patria. Thou camest not, Diphilus, t'was ill. My noble brother, my excuse is my king's strict command, which you, my lord, can witness with me. Tis true, Melantius, he might not come till the solemnity of this great match were past. Have you heard of it? Yes, I have given cause to those that envy my deeds abroad to call me gamesome. I have no other business here at Rhodes. Well, we have a mask to-night, and you must tread a soldier's measure. These soft and silken wars are not for me. The music must be shrill and all confused that stirs my blood, and then I dance with arms. But is a mentor wed? This day? All joys upon him, for he is my friend. Wonder not that I call a man so young my friend. His worth is great, valiant he is, and temperate, and one that never thinks his life his own if his friend need it. When he was a boy, as oft as I returned, as without boast, I brought home conquest. He would gaze upon me and view me round, to find in what one limb the virtue lay to do those things he heard. Then would he wish to see my sword, and feel the quickness of the edge, and in his hand weigh it. He oft would make me smile at this. His youth did promise much, and his ripe years will see it all performed. Enter Aspasia, passing by. Hail, maid and wife, thou fair Aspasia, may the holy knot that thou hast tied to-day last till the hand of age undo't, 
mayst thou bring a race unto a mentor that may fill the world successively with soldiers my hard fortunes deserve not scorn for i was never proud when they were good exit aspatia how's this you are mistaken for she is not married you said a mentor was tis true but pardon me i did receive letters at patria from my mentor that he should marry her and so it stood in all opinion long but your arrival made me imagine you heard the change who hath he taken then a lady sir that bears the light above her and strikes dead with flashes of her eye the fair evadne your virtuous sister peace of heart betwixt them but this is strange the king my brother did it to honour you and these solemnities are at his charge tis royal like himself but i am sad my speech bears so unfortunate a sound to beautiful aspasia there is rage hid in her father's breast calianax bent long against me and he should not think if i could call it back that i would take so base revenges as to scorn the state of his neglected daughter holds he still his greatness with the king yes but this lady walks discontented with her watery eyes bent on the earth the unfrequented woods are her delight and when she sees a bank stuck full of flowers she with a sigh will tell her servants what a pretty place it were to bury lovers in and make her maids pluck em and strew her over like a corse she carries with her an infectious grief that strikes all her beholders she will sing the mournfullest things that ever ear hath heard and sigh and sing again and when the rest of our young ladies in their wanton blood tell mirthful tales in course that fill the room with laughter she will with so sad a look bring forth a story of the silent death of some forsaken virgin which her grief will put in such a phrase that ere she end she'll send them weeping one by one away she has a brother under my command like her a face as womanish as hers but with a spirit that hath much outgrown the number of his years enter a mentor my lord the bridegroom i might run fiercely not more hastily upon my foe i i love thee well amintor my mouth is much too narrow for my heart i joy to look upon those eyes of thine thou art my friend but my disordered speech cuts off my love thou art melantius all love is spoke in that a sacrifice to thank the gods melantius is returned in safety victory sits on his sword as she was wont may she build there and dwell and may thy armour be as it hath been only thy valour and thy innocence what endless treasures would our enemies give that i might hold thee still thus i am but poor in words but credit me young man thy mother could no more but weep for joy to see thee after long absence all the wounds i have fetch not so much away nor all the cries of widowed mothers but this is peace and what was war pardon thou holy god of marriage-bed and frown not i am forced in answer of such noble tears as those to weep upon my wedding-day i fear thou art grown too sick for i hear a lady mourns for thee men say to death forsaken of thee on what terms i know not she had my promise but the king forbade it and made me make this worthy change thy sister accompanied with graces above her with whom i long to lose my lusty youth and grow old in her arms be prosperous enter messenger my lord the maskers rage for you we are gone cleon strato diphilus we'll all attend you we shall trouble you with our solemnities not so amintor but if you laugh at my rude carriage in peace i'll do as much for you in war when you come thither yet i have a mistress to bring to your delights rough though i am i have a mistress and she has a heart she says but trust me it is stone no better there is no place that i can challenge in't but you stand still and here my way lies exeunt scene two enter calianax with diagoras diagoras look to the doors better for shame 
You let in all the world, and anon the king will rail at me. Ay, very well said. By Jove, the king will have the show in the court. Why do you swear so, my lord? You know he'll have it here. By this light, if he be wise, he will not. And if he will not be wise, you are forsworn. One may wear his heart out with swearing, and get thanks on no side. I'll be gone. Look to it who will. My lord, I will never keep them out. Pray stay, your looks will terrify them. My looks terrify them, you coxcombly ass, you? I'll be judged by all the company whether thou hast not a worse face than I. I mean because they know you and your office. Office? I would I could put it off. I'm sure I sweat quite through my office. I might have made room at my daughter's wedding. They had near killed her among them. And now I must do service for him that hath forsaken her. Serve that will. Exit Kalyanax. He's so humorous since his daughter was forsaken. Hark! Hark! There, there! Oh, so, so! Codas, Codas, what now? Open the door. Who's there? Melantius. I hope your lordship bring no troop with you, for if you do I must return them. Enter Melantius and a lady. None but this lady, sir. The ladies are all placed above, save those that come in the king's troop. The best of roads sit there, and there's room. I thank you, sir. When I have seen you placed, madame, I must attend the king. But the mask done, I'll wait on you again. Exeunt Melantius and lady. Stand back there. Room for my lord Melantius. Pray bear back. This is no place for such youths and their trolls. Oh, let the doors shut again. Ay, do your heads itch. I'll scratch them for you. So now thrust and hang. Again? Who is it now? Oh, I cannot blame my lord Kalyanax for going away. Would he were here, he would run raging among them, and break a dozen wiser heads than his own in the twinkling of an eye. What's the news now? I pray, can you help me to the speech of the master cook? If I open the door, I'll cook some of your calves' heads. Peace, rogues! Again? Who is it? Melantius. Enter Kalyanax. Let him not in. Oh, my lord, I must. Make room there for my lord. Enter Melantius. Is your lady placed? Yes, sir. I thank you, my lord Kalyanax. Well met. Your causeless hate to me, I hope, is buried. Yes, I do service for your sister here. That brings my own poor child to timeless death. She loves your friend Aminta. Ah, uh, such another false-hearted lord as you. You do me wrong a most unmanly one, and I am slow in taking vengeance, but be well advised. It may be so. Who placed the lady there so near the presence of the king? I did. My lord, she must not sit there. Why? The place is kept for women of more worth. More worth than she? It misbecomes your age and place to be thus womanish. Forbear. What you have spoke, I am content to think the palsy shook your tongue, too. Why, it is well if I stand here to place men's wenches. I shall forget this place, thy age, my safety, and through all cut that poor sickly weak thou hast to live away from thee. Nay, I know you can fight for your whore. Bait the king, and be he flesh and blood, he lies that says it. Thy mother at fifteen was black and sinful to her. Good my lord. Some god, pluck threescore years from that fond man, that I may kill him and not stain mine honour. It is the curse of soldiers, that in peace they shall be brained by such ignoble men, as if the land were troubled, would with tears and knees beg succour from em. Would that blood, that sea of blood, that I have lost in fight, were running in thy veins, that it might make thee apt to say less, or able to maintain, shouldst thou say more? 
This Rhodes, I see, is not but a place privileged to do men wrong. Ay, you may say your pleasure. Enter a mentor. What vile injury has stirred my worthy friend, who is as slow to fight with words as he is quick of hand? That heap of age, which I should reverence if it were temperate, but testy years are most contemptible. Good sir, forbear. There is just such another as yourself. He will wrong you, or me, or any man, and talk as if he had no life to lose since this our match. The king is coming in. I would not for more wealth than I enjoy. He should perceive you raging. He did hear you were at difference now, which hastened him. Make room there. Hote boys play within. Enter king, Evadne, Aspatia, lords and ladies. Melantius, thou art welcome, and my love is with thee still. But this is not a place to brabble in. Kalyanax, join hands. He shall not have my hand. This is no time to force you to it. I do love you both. Kalyanax, you look well to your office, and you, Melantius, are welcome home. Begin the mask. Sister, I joy to see you, and your choice. You looked with my eyes when you took that man. Be happy in him. O oh, my dearest brother, your presence is more joyful than this day can be unto me. The mask begins. Night rises in mists. Our rain is come, for in the raging sea the sun is drowned, and with him fell the day. Bride Cynthia, hear my voice. I am the night for whom thou bearest about thy borrowed light. Appear, no longer thy pale visage shroud, but strike thy silver horn through a cloud, and send a beam upon my swarthy face, by which I may discover all the place and persons, and how many longing eyes are come to wait on our solemnities. Enter Cynthia. How dull and black am I! I could not find this beauty without thee, I am so blind. Methinks they show like to those eastern streaks that warn us hence before the morning breaks. Back, my pale servant, for these eyes know how to shoot far more and quicker rays than thou. Great queen, they be a troop for whom alone one of my clearest moons I have put on, a troop that looks as if thyself and I had plucked our reins in, and our whips laid by to gaze upon these mortals that appear brighter than we. Then let us keep em here, and never more our chariots drive away, but hold our places and outshine the day. Great queen of shadows, you are pleased to speak of more than may be done. We may not break the gods' decree, but when our time is come must drive away and give the day our room. Yet whilst our reign lasts, let us stretch our power to give our servants one contented hour with such unwanted solemn grace and state as may forever after force them hate our brother's glorious beams, and wish the night crowned with a thousand stars and our cold light. For almost all the world their service bend to Phoebus, and in vain my light I lend, gazed on unto my setting from my rise, almost of none but of unquiet eyes. Then shine at full, fair queen, and by thy power produce a birth to crown this happy hour. Of nymphs and shepherds let their songs discover, easy and sweet, who is a happy lover. Or, if thou wilt, then call thine own endymion from the sweet flowery bed he lies upon, on Letmus top, thy pale beams drawn away, and of this long night let him make a day. Thou dreamst, dark queen, that fair boy was not mine, nor went I down to kiss him. Ease and wine have bred these bold tales. Poets, when they rage, turn gods to men and make an hour an age. But I will give a greater state and glory, and raise to time a noble memory of what these lovers are. Rise, rise, I say, thou power of deeps, thy surges laid away. Neptune, great king of waters, and by me be proud to be commanded. Neptune rises. Cynthia, see thy word hath fetched me hither. Let me know why I ascend. Doth this majestic show give thee no knowledge yet? Yes, now I see. Something intended, Cynthia, worthy thee. 
Go on, I'll be a helper. Hie thee then, and charge the wind fly from his rocky den. Let loose thy subjects, only Boreas too foul for our intention as he was. Still keep him fast chained. We must have none here but vernal blasts and gentle winds appear, such as blow flowers, and through the glad boughs sing many soft welcomes to the lusty spring. These are our music. Next thy watery race bring on in couples. We are pleased to grace this noble knight, each in their richest things, your own deeps or the broken vessel brings. Be prodigal, and I shall be as kind and shine as full upon you. Ho, oh, the wind commanding Aeolus! Enter Aeolus out of a rock. Great Neptune. He. What is thy will? We do command thee, free favonius and thy milder winds to wait upon our cynthia but tie boreas straight he's too rebellious i shall do it do exit aeolus great mistress of the flood and all below thy full command has taken enter aeolus with favonius and the other winds ho the main neptune here boreas has broke his chain and struggling with the rest has got away let him alone i'll take him up at sea he will not long be thence go once again and call out of the bottoms of the main blue proteus and the rest charge them put on their greatest pearls and the most sparkling stone the bearing rock breeds till this night is done by me a solemn honor to the moon fly like a full sail I am gone. Exit Aeolus. Dark night strike a full silence, do a thorough right to this great chorus, that our music may touch high as heaven, and make the east break day at midnight. Cynthia to thy power, and them we obey. Joy to this great company, and no day come to steal this night away, till the rites of love are ended, and the lusty bridegroom say, welcome light of all befriended pace out you watery powers below let your feet like the galleys when they row even beat let your unknown measures set to the still winds tell to all that gods have come immortal great to honour this great nuptial hold back thy hours dark night till we have done the day will come too soon young maids will curse thee if thou stealst away and leavest their blushes open to the day stay stay and hide the blushes of the bride stay gentle knight and with thy darkness cover the kisses of her lover stay and confound her tears and her shrill cryings her weak denials vows and often dyings stay and hide all but help not though she call great queen of us and heaven Hear what I bring to make this hour a full one, if not her measure. Speak, Seas King. Thy tunes my amphitrity joys to have, when they will dance upon the rising wave and court me as the sails, my tritons play music to lead a storm, I'll lead the way. To bed, to bed. Come, Hymen lead the bride and lay her by her husband's side bring in the virgins every one that grieve to lie alone that they may kiss while they may say a maid to-morrow twill be other kissed and said hesperus be long a-shining whilst these lovers are a-twining enter aeolus ho neptune aeolus the seas go high Boreas hath raised a storm. Go and apply thy trident, else I prophesy, ere day, many a tall ship will be cast away. Descend with all the gods, and all their power to strike a calm. A thanks to every one, and to gratulate so great a service done at my desire, ye shall have many floods fuller and higher than you have wished for. No ebb shall dare to let the day see where your dwellings are now back into your government in haste lest your proud charge should swell above the waist and win upon the island we obey neptune descends with the sea-gods hold up thy head dead knight seest thou not day 
the east begins to lighten i must down and give my brother place oh i could frown to see the day the day that flings his light upon my kingdoms and condemns old night let him go on and flame i hope to see another wild fire in his axle tree and all falls drenched but i forgot speak queen the day grows on i must no more be seen heave up thy drowsy head again and see a greater light a greater majesty between our sect and us whip up thy team the day breaks here and you some flashing stream shot from the south say which way wilt thou go i'll vanish into mists i into day exeunt the mask ends take lights there ladies get the bride to bed we will not see you laid good night a mentor we'll ease you of that tedious ceremony were it my case i should think time runs slow if thou beest noble youth get me a boy that may defend my kingdom from my foes all happiness to you good night melantius exeunt end of act one Act Two of the Maid's Tragedy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Maid's Tragedy by Francis Beaumont and John Fletcher. Act Two. Scene One. Enter Evadne, Aspasia, Dula, and other ladies. Madam, shall we undress you for this fight? The wars are naked that you must make to night. You are very merry, Dula i should be far merrier madam if it were with me as it is with you why how now wench come ladies will you help i am soon undone and as soon done good store of clothes will trouble you at both art thou drunk dula why there's none here but we thou think'st belike there is no modesty when we are alone ah by my troth you hit my thoughts aright oh you prick me lady tis against my will anon you must endure more and lie still your best to practice sure this wench is mad no faith this is a trick that i have had since i was fourteen tis high time to leave it nay now i'll keep it till the trick leave me a dozen wanton words put in your head will make you lively in your husband's bed nay faith then take it take it madam where we all i hope will take it that i hear nay then i'll give you war so will i make the ablest man in Rhodes or his heart to ache wilt take my place to-night i'll hold your cards against any two i know what wilt thou do madam we'll do it and make em leave play too aspasia take her part i will refuse it she will pluck down a side she does not use it why do you will find the play quickly because your head lies well that way <laughs> i thank thee dula would thou couldst instill some of thy mirth into aspasia nothing but sad thoughts in her breast do dwell methinks a mean betwixt you would do well she is in love hang me if i were so but i could run my country i love too to do those things that people in love do it were a timeless smile should prove my cheek it were a fitter hour for me to laugh when at the altar the religious priest were pacifying the offended powers with sacrifice then now this should have been my night and all your hands have been employed in giving me a spotless offering to young Aminter's bed, as we are now for you. Pardon, Evadne, would my worth were great as yours, or that the king or he or both thought so, perhaps he found me worthless. But till he did so, in these ears of mine, these credulous ears, he poured the sweetest words that art or love could frame. If he were false, pardon it heaven, and if I did want virtue, you safely may forgive that too, for I have left none that I had from you. Nay, leave this sad talk, madam. Would I could, then should I leave the cause. See if you have not spoiled all Dula's mirth. Thou think'st thy heart hard, but if thou beest caught, remember me. Thou shalt perceive a fire shot suddenly into thee. That's not so good. Let him shoot anything but fire. I fear him not well wench thou mayst be taken ladies good night i'll do the rest myself nay let your lord do some lay a garland on my hearse of the dismal yew 
That's one of your sad songs, madam. Believe me, tis a very pretty one. How is it, madam? Lay a garland on my hearse of the dismal you. Maidens, willow branches bear, say I die true. My love was false, but I was firm from my hour of birth upon my buried body lay lightly gentle earth ah oh, fie aunt madam the words are so strange they are able to make one dream of hobgoblins i could never have the power sing that dula i could never have the power to love one above an hour but my heart would prompt mine eye on some other man to fly venus fix mine eyes fast or if not give me all that i shall see at last so leave me now nay we must see you laid madam good night may all the marriage joys that longing maids imagine in their beds prove so unto you may no discontent grow twixt your love and you but if there do inquire of me and i will guide your moan teach you an artificial way to grieve to keep your sorrow waking love your lord no worse than i but if you love so well alas you may displease him so did i this is the last time you shall look on me ladies farewell as soon as i am dead come all and watch one night about my hearse bring each a mournful story and a tear to offer at it when i go to earth with flattering ivy clasp my coffin round write on my brow my fortune let my bier be borne by virgins that shall sing by course the truth of maids and perjuries of men alas i pity thee exit evadne madam good, good night, night. Come, we'll let in the bridegroom. Where's my lord? Here, take this light. Enter a mentor. You'll find her in the dark. Your lady's scarce abed yet. You must help her. Go and be happy in your lady's love. May all the wrongs that you have done to me be utterly forgotten in my death. I'll trouble you no more. Yet I will take a parting kiss and will not be denied. You'll come, my lord and see the virgins weep when I am laid in earth, though you yourself can know no pity. Thus I wind myself into this willow garland, and am prouder that I was once your love, though now refused, than to have had another true to me. So with my prayers I leave you, and must try some yet unpractised way to grieve and die. Exit Aspatia. Come, ladies, will you go? Good night, my lord. Much happiness unto you all. Exeunt ladies. I did that lady wrong. Methinks I feel her grief shoot suddenly through all my veins. Mine eyes run. This is strange at such a time. It was the king first moved me to it, but he has not my will in keeping. Why do I perplex myself thus? Something whispers me. Go not to bed. My guilt is not so great as mine own conscience. Too sensible would make me think I only break a promise, and t'was the king that forced me, timorous flesh, why shakest thou so? Away my idle fears. Enter Evadne. Yonder she is, the lustre of whose eye can blot away the sad remembrance of all these things. O oh, my Evadne, spare that tender body, let it not take cold, the vapours of the night will not fall here. To bed, my love, Hymen will punish us for being slack performers of his rites. Camest thou to call me? No. Come, come, my love, and let us lose ourselves to one another. Why art thou up so long? I am not well. To bed, then let me wind thee in these arms, till I have banished sickness. Good my lord, I cannot sleep. Evadne will watch. I mean no sleeping. I'll not go to bed. I prithee do. I will not. For the world why my dear love why i have sworn i will not sworn i 
How sworn, Evadne? Yes, sworn, Amintor, and will swear again if you will wish to hear me. To whom have you sworn this? If I should name him, the matter were not great. Come, this is but the coyness of a bride. The coyness of a bride? How prettily that frown becomes thee. Do you like it so? Thou canst not dress thy face in such a look, but I shall like it. What look likes you best? Why do you ask? That I may show you one less pleasing to you. How's that? That I may show you one less pleasing to you. I prithee put thy jests in milder looks. It shows as thou wert angry. So perhaps I am indeed. Why? Who has done thee wrong? Name me the man, and by thyself I swear, thy yet unconquered self, I will revenge thee. Now I shall try thy truth. If thou dost love me, thou weighest not anything compared with me. Life, honour, joys eternal, all delights this world can yield, or hopeful people feign, or in the life to come, a light as air to a true lover when his lady frowns and bids him do this. Wilt thou kill this man? Swear, my mentor, and I'll kiss the sin off from thy lips. I will not swear, sweet love, till I do not know the cause. I would thou wouldst. Why, it is thou that wrongest me. I hate thee. Thou shouldst have killed thyself. If I should know that, I should quickly kill the man you hated. Know it, then, and do it. Oh, no, what looks soe'er thou shalt put on, to try my faith, I shall not think thee false. I cannot find one blemish in thy face. Where falsehood should abide, leave and to bed. If you have sworn to any of the virgins that were your old companions to preserve your maidenhead a night, it may be done without this means. A maidenhead, a mentor, at my years? Sure, she raves, this cannot be thy natural temper. Shall I call thy maids? Either thy healthful sleep hath left thee long, or else some fever rages in thy blood. Neither, a mentor. Think you I am mad because I speak the truth? Will you not lie with me to-night? To-night? You talk as if I would hereafter. Hereafter? Yes, I do. You are deceived. Put off amazement, and with patience mark what I shall utter, for the oracle knows nothing truer. Tis not for a night or two that I forbear thy bed, but for ever. I dream. Awake, Amintor. You hear right. I sooner will find out the beds of snakes, and with my youthful blood warm their cold flesh, letting them curl themselves about my limbs, than sleep one night with thee. This is not feigned, nor sounds it like the coyness of a bride. Is flesh so earthly to endure all this? Are these the joys of marriage? Hymen, keep this story, that will make succeeding youth neglect thy ceremonies from all ears. Let it not rise up for thy shame and mine to after ages. We will scorn thy laws. If thou know better, bless them. Touch the heart of her that thou hast sent me, or the world shall know that there's not an altar that will smoke in praise of thee. We will adopt us, sons. Then virtue shall inherit, and not blood. If we do lust, we'll take the next we meet, serving ourselves as other creatures do, and never take note of the female more nor of her issue i do rage in vain she can but jest oh pardon me my love so dear the thoughts are that i hold of thee that i must break forth satisfy my fear it is a pain beyond the hand of death to be in doubt confirm it with an oath if this be true do you invent the form let there be in it all the binding words devils and conjurers can put together and i will take it i have sworn before and hereby all things holy do again, never to be acquainted with thy bed. Is your doubt over now? I know too much. Would I have doubted still? Was ever such a marriage night as this? You powers above, if you did ever mean man should be used thus, you have thought a way how he may bear himself, and save his honour. Instruct me in it, for to my dull eyes there is no mean, no moderate course to run. I must live scorned, or be a murderer. Is there a third? Why is this night so calm? 
why does not heaven speak in thunder to us and drown her voice this rage will do no good evadne hear me thou hast ta'en an oath but such a rash one that to keep it were worse than to swear it call it back to thee such vows as those never ascend the heaven a tear or two will wash it quite away have mercy on my youth my hopeful youth if thou be pitiful for without boast this land was proud of me what lady was there that men called fair and virtuous in this isle that would have shunned my love it is in thee to make me hold this worth o oh, we vain men that trust out all our reputation to rest upon the weak and yielding hand of feeble women but thou art not stone thy flesh is soft and in thine eyes doth dwell the spirit of love thy heart cannot be hard come lead me from the bottom of despair to all the joys thou hast i know thou wilt and make me careful lest the sudden change o'ercome my spirits when i call back this oath the pains of hell environ me i sleep and am too temperate come to bed or by those hairs which if thou hast a soul like to thy locks were threads for kings to wear about their arms why so perhaps they are i'll drag thee to my bed and make thy tongue undo this wicked oath or on thy flesh i'll print a thousand wounds to let out life i fear thee not do what thou darest to me every ill-sounding word or threatening look thou showest to me will be revenged at full it will not sure evadne do not you hazard that have ye your champions alas a mentor think'st thou i forbear to sleep with thee because i have put on a maiden strictness look upon these cheeks and thou shalt find the hot and rising blood unapt for such a vow no in this heart there dwells as much desire and as much will to put that wished act in practice as ever yet was known to woman and they have been shown both but it was the folly of thy youth to think this beauty to what land so e'er it shall be called shall stoop to any second i do enjoy the best and in that height have sworn to stand or die you guess the man no let me know the man that wrongs me so that i may cut his body into motes and scatter it before the northern wind you dare not strike him do not wrong me so yes if his body were a poisonous plant that it were death to touch i have a soul will throw me on him why tis the king the king what will you do now tis not the king what did he make this match for dull a mentor oh thou hast named a word that wipes away all thoughts revengeful in that sacred name the king there lies a terror what frail man dares lift his hand against it let the gods speak to him when they please till then let us suffer and wait why should you fill yourself so full of heat and haste so to my bed i am no virgin what devil put it in thy fancy then to marry me alas i must have one to father children and to bear the name of husband to me that my sin may be more honourable what a strange thing am i a miserable one one that myself am sorry for why show it then in this if thou hast pity though thy love be none kill me and all true lovers that shall live in after ages crossed in their desires shall bless thy memory and call thee good because such mercy in thy heart was found to rid a lingering wretch i must have one to fill thy room again if thou wert dead else by this night i would i pity thee these strange and sudden injuries have fallen so thick upon me that i lose all sense of what they are methinks i am not wronged nor is it aught if we're censuring the world i can but hide it reputation thou art a word no more but thou hast shown an impudence so high that to the world i fear thou wilt betray or shame thyself to cover shame i took thee never fear that i would blaze myself nor let the king know i conceive he wrongs me then mine honour will thrust me into action that my flesh could bear with patience and it is some ease to me in these extremes that i knew this before i touched thee 
else had all the sins of mankind stood betwixt me and the king i had gone through em to his heart and thine i have lost one desire tis not his crown shall buy me to thy bed now i resolve he has dishonoured thee give me thy hand be careful of thy credit and sin close tis all i wish upon thy chamber floor i'll rest to-night that morning visitors may think we did as married people use and prithee smile upon me when they come and seem to toy as if thou hadst been pleased with what we did fear not i will do this come let us practise and as wantonly as ever loving bride and bridegroom met let's laugh and enter here i am content down all the swellings of my troubled heart when we walk thus entwined let all eyes see if ever lovers better did agree exit scene two enter aspasia antiphila and olympias away you are not sad force it no further good gods how well you look such a full colour young bashful brides put on sure you are new married yes madam to your grief alas poor wenches go learn to love first learn to lose yourselves learn to be flattered and believe and bless the double tongue that did it make a faith out of the miracles of ancient lovers such as spake truth and died in it and like me believe all faithful and be miserable did you ne'er love yet wenches speak olympias thou hast an easy temper fit for stamp never nor you antiphila nor i then my good girls be more than women wise at least be more than i was and be sure you credit anything the light gives light to before a man rather believe the sea weeps for the ruined merchant when he roars rather the wind courts but the pregnant sails when the strong cordage cracks rather the sun comes but to kiss the fruit in wealthy autumn when all falls blasted if you needs must love forced by ill fate take to your maiden bosoms two dead cold aspects and of them make lovers they cannot flatter nor forswear one kiss makes a long peace for all but man oh that beast man come let's be sad my girls that downcast of thine eye olympias shows a fine sorrow mark antiphila just such another was the nymphoenone when paris brought home helen now a tear and then thou art a piece expressing fully the carthage queen when from a cold sea-rock full with her sorrow she tied fast her eyes to the fair trojan ships and having lost them just as thine eyes do down stole a tear antiphila what would this wench do if she were aspasia here she would stand till some more pitying god turned her to marble tis enough my wench show me the piece of needlework you wrought of ariadne madam yes that piece this should be theseus he has a cousining face you meant him for a man he was so madam why then tis well enough never look back you have a full wind and a false heart theseus does not the story say his keel was split or his mast spent or some kind rock or other met with his vessel not as i remember it should have been so could the gods know this and not all of their number raise a storm but they are all as ill this false smile was well expressed just such another caught me you shall not go so antiphila in this place work a quicksand and over it a shallow smiling water and his ship ploughing it and then a fear do that fear to the life wench twill wrong the story twill make the story wronged by wanton poets live long and be believed but where's the lady there madam fie you have missed it here antiphila you are much mistaken wench these colours are not dull and pale enough to show a soul so full of misery as this sad lady's was do it by me do it again by me the lost aspasia and you shall find all true but the wild island i stand upon the sea-breach now and think mine arms thus and mine hair blown with the wind wild as that desert and let all about me tell that i am forsaken do my face if thou hadst ever feeling of a sorrow thus thus antiphila strive to make me look like sorrow's monument 
and the trees about me let them be dry and leafless, let the rocks groan with continual surges, and behind me make all a desolation. Look, look, wenches, a miserable life of this poor picture. Dear madam! I have done. Sit down, and let us upon that point fix all our eyes, that point there. Make a dull silence till you feel a sudden sadness give us new souls. Enter Kalianax. The king may do this, and he may not do it. My child is wronged, disgraced. Well, how now, hussies? What, at your ease? Is this a time to sit still? Up, you lazy whores, up, or I'll swind you. Nay, good my lord. You'll lie down shortly, get you in and work. What? Are you grown so resty? You want ears. We shall have some of the court boys do that office. My lord, we do no more than we are charged. It is the lady's pleasure we be thus in grief. She is forsaken. There's a rogue, too, a young dissembling slave. Well, get you in. I'll have a bout with that boy. It is high time now to be valiant. I confess my youth was never prone that way. What? Made an ass? A court's tail? Well, I will be valiant, and beat some dozen of these whelps, I will. And there's another of them, a trin, cheating soldier. I'll maul that rascal. He's outbraved me twice. But now I thank the gods I am valiant. Go, get you in. I'll take a course with all. Exeunt. End of Act Two. Act Three of The Maid's Tragedy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Maid's Tragedy by Francis Beaumont and John Fletcher. Act Three. Scene One. Enter Cleon, Strato, and Diphilus. Your sister is not up yet. Oh, brides must take their morning rest. The night is troublesome. But not tedious. What odds he has not my sister's maidenhead to-night? No, it's odds against any bridegroom living. He ne'er gets it while he lives. You marry with my sister. You'll please to allow me the same freedom with your mother. She's at your service. Then she's merry enough for herself. She needs no tickling. Knock at the door. We shall interrupt them. No matter. They have the year before them. Good morrow, sister. Spare yourself to-day. The night will come again. Enter a mentor. Who's there? My brother? I am no readier yet. Your sister is but now up. You look as you had lost your eyes to-night. I think you have not slept. In faith, I have not. You have done better then. We ventured for a boy. When he is twelve, he shall command against the foes of Rhodes. Shall we be merry? You cannot. You want sleep. Aside. Tis true, but she, as if she had drunk Lethe, or had made even with heaven, did fetch so still a sleep, so sweet and sound. What's that? Your sister frets this morning, and does turn her eyes upon me, as people on their headsmen. She does chafe and kiss and chafe again, and clap my cheeks. She's in another world. Then I had lost. I was about to lay you had not got her maidenhead to-night. Ha! Does he not mock me? You had lost indeed. I do not use to bungle. You do deserve her. I laid my lips to hers, and that wild breath that was rude and rough to me last night was sweet as April. I'll be guilty too if these be the effects. Enter Melantius. Good day, Amintor. For to me the name of brother is too distant. We are friends, and that is nearer. Dear Melantius, let me behold thee, is it possible? What sudden gaze is this? Tis wondrous strange. Why does thine eye desire so strict a view of that it knows so well? There's nothing here that is not thine. I wonder much, Melantius, to see those noble looks that make me think how virtuous thou art. And on the sudden, tis strange to me, thou shouldst have worth and honour, or not be base and false and treacherous and every ill, but— Stay, stay, my friend, 
I fear this sound will not become our loves. No more, embrace me. Oh, mistake me not, I know thee to be full of all those deeds that we frail men call good, but by the course of nature thou shouldst be as quickly changed as are the winds, dissembling as the sea, that now wears brows as smooth as virgins be, tempting the merchant to invade his face, and in an hour calls his billows up, and shoots him at the sun, destroying all he carries on him. Aside. Oh, how near am I to utter my sick thoughts. But why, my friend, should I be so by nature? I have wed thy sister, who hath virtuous thoughts enough for one whole family, and it is strange that you should feel no want. Believe me, this compliment's too cunning for me. What should I be then by the course of nature, they having both robbed me of so much virtue? Oh, call the bride, my lord, a mentor, that we may see her blush and turn her eyes down. It is the prettiest sport. Evadne. My lord. Come forth, my love. Your brothers do attend to wish you joy. I am not ready yet. Enough, enough. They'll mock me. Faith, thou shalt come in. Enter Evadne. Good morrow, sister. He that understands whom you have wed need not to wish you joy. You have enough. Take heed you be not proud. Oh, sister, what have you done? I done? Why, what have I done? My lord, a mentor swears you are no maid now. Oh, push. He faith he does. I knew I should be mocked. With the truth. If twere to do again, in faith I would not marry. Aside. Nor I, by heaven. Sister, Dula swears she heard you cry two rooms off. Fie, how you talk. Let's see you walk. By my troth, you are spoiled. A mentor. Huh? Thou art sad. Who I? I thank you for that. Shall Diphilus, thou and I, sing a catch? How? Prithee, let's. Nay, that's too much the other way. I am so lightened with my happiness. How dost thou love? Kiss me. I cannot love you. You tell tales of me. Nothing but what becomes us. Gentlemen, would you have all such wives, and all the world, that I might be no wonder? You are all sad. What, do you envy me? I walk, methinks, on water, and ne'er sink I am so light. Tis well you are so. Well, how can I be other when she looks thus? Is there no music there? Let's dance. Why, this is strange, Amintor. I do not know myself, yet I could wish my joy were less. I'll marry too, if it will make one thus. Amintor, hark. What says my love? I must obey. You do it scurvily, twill be perceived. My lord the king is here. Enter the king and Lysippus. Where? And his brother. Good morrow all, a mentor, joy on joy fall thick upon thee, and madam, you are altered since I saw you. I must salute you. You are now another's. How light you your night's rest. Ill, sir. Indeed, she took but little. You'll let her take more, and thank her, too, shortly. A mentor, wert thou truly honest till thou wert married? Yes, sir. Tell me, then, how shows the sport unto thee? Why, well. What did you do? No more nor less than other couples use. You know what tis, it has but a coarse name. But prithee, I should think by her black eye and her red cheek, she should be quick and stirring in this same business, ha? Huh? I cannot tell, I ne'er tried other, sir. But I perceive she is as quick as you delivered. Well, you'll trust me then, the mentor, to choose a wife for you again. No, never, sir. Why, like you this so ill? So well I like her, for this I bow my knee in thanks to you, and unto heaven will pay my grateful tribute hourly, and to hope we shall draw out a long contented life together here, and die both full of grey hairs in one day. For which the thanks is yours, but if the powers that rule us, please to call her first away, without pride spoke, this world hold not a wife worthy to take her room. Aside. I do not like this. All forbear the room but you, Amentor, and your lady. Exeunt all but the king, 
a mentor and evadne i have some speech with you that may concern your after living well aside he will not tell me that he lies with her if he do something heavenly stay my heart for i shall be apt to thrust this arm of mine to acts unlawful you will suffer me to talk with her a mentor and not have a jealous pang sir i dare trust my wife with whom she dares to talk and not be jealous how do you like a mentor as i did sir how's that as one that to fulfil your will and pleasure i have given leave to call me wife and love i see there is no lasting faith in sin they that break word with heaven will break again with all the world and so dost thou with me how sir this subtle woman's ignorance will not excuse you thou hast taken oaths so great methought they did not well become a woman's mouth that thou wouldst ne'er enjoy a man but me i never did swear so you do me wrong day and night have heard it i swore indeed that i would never love a man of lower place but if your fortune should throw you from this height i bade you trust i would forsake you and would bend to him that won your throne i love with my ambition not with mine eyes but if i ever yet touched any other leprosy light hair upon my face which for your royalty i would not stain why thou dissemblest and it is in me to punish thee why it is in me then not to love you which will more afflict your body than your punishment can mine but thou hast let a mentor lie with thee i have not impudence he says himself so he lies he does not by this light he does strangely and basely and i'll prove it so i did not only shun him for a night but told him i would never close with him speak lower tis false i'm no man to answer with a blow or if i were you are the king but urge me not tis most true do not i know the uncontrolled thoughts that youth brings with him when his blood is high with expectation and desires of that he long hath waited for is not his spirit though he be temperate of as valiant strain as this our age hath known what could he do if such a sudden speech had met his blood but ruin thee for ever if he had not killed thee he could not bear it thus he is as we or any other wronged man it is dissembling take him farewell henceforth i am thy foe and what disgraces i can blot thee look for stay sir a mentor you shall hear a mentor what my love a mentor thou hast an ingenious look and shouldst be virtuous it amazeth me that thou canst make such base malicious lies what my dear wife dear wife i do despise thee why nothing can be baser than to sow dissension amongst lovers lovers who the king and me o oh, heaven who should live long and love without distaste were it not for such pick thanks as thyself did you lie with me swear now and be punished in hell for this the faithless sin i made to fair aspatia is not yet revenged it follows me i will not lose a word to this wild woman but to you my king the anguish of my soul thrusts out this truth you are a tyrant and not so much to wrong an honest man thus as to take a pride in talking with him of it now sir see how loud this fellow lied you that can know to wrong should know how men must right themselves what punishment is due from me to him that shall abuse my bed it is not death nor can that satisfy unless i send your lives through all the land to show how nobly i have freed myself draw not thy sword thou knowest i cannot fear a subject's hand but thou shalt feel the weight of this if thou dost rage the weight of that if you have any worth for heaven's sake think i fear not swords for as you are mere man i dare as easily kill you for this deed as you dare think to do it but there is divinity about you that strikes dead my rising passions as you are my king i fall before you and present my sword to cut mine own flesh if it be your will alas i am nothing but a multitude of walking griefs yet should i murder you i might before the world take the excuse of madness for compare my injuries and they will well appear too sad a weight for reason to endure 
but fall I first amongst my sorrows, ere my treacherous hand touch holy things. But why? I know not what I have to say. Why did you choose out me to make thus wretched? There were thousand fools easy to work on, and of state enough within the land. I would not have a fool. It were no credit for me. Worse and worse, thou that darest talk unto thy husband thus, profess thyself a whore, and more than so, resolve to be so still. It is my fate to bear and bow beneath a thousand griefs, to keep that little credit with the world. But there were wise ones, too. You might have tan another. No, for I believe thee honest, as thou wert valiant. All the happiness bestowed upon me turns into disgrace. Gods, take your honesty again, for I am loaded with it. Good my lord the king, be private in it. Thou mayest live, a mentor, free as thy king, if thou wilt wink at this, and be a means that we may meet in secret. Aboard, hold my breast, a bitter curse seize me, if I forget not all respects that are religious, on another word sounded like that, and through a sea of sins will wade to my revenge, though I should call pains here, and after life upon my soul. Well, I am resolute. You lay not with her, and so leave you. Exit King. You must needs be prating and see what follows. Prithee, vex me not. Leave me, I am afraid some sudden start will pull a murder on me. I am gone. I love my life well. Exit Evadne. I hate mine as much. This tis to break a troth. I should be glad if all this tide of grief would make me mad. Exit. Scene two. Enter Melantius. I'll know the cause of all a mentor's griefs, or friendship shall be idle. Enter Kalianax. O oh, Melantius, my daughter will die. Trust me, I am sorry. Would thou hadst ta'en her room. Thou art a slave, a cutthroat slave, a bloody treacherous slave. Take heed, old man, thou wilt be heard to rave, and lose thine offices. I am valiant grown at all these years, and thou art but a slave. <laughs> leave some company will come and i respect thy years not thee so much that i could wish to laugh at thee alone i'll spoil your mirth i mean to fight with thee there lies my cloak this was my father's sword and he durst fight are you prepared why wilt thou dote thyself out of thy life hence get thee to bed have careful looking to and eat warm things, and trouble not me. My head is full of thoughts more weighty than thy life or death can be. You have a name in war when you stand safe amongst a multitude. But I will try what you dare do unto a weak old man in single fight. You'll give ground, I fear. Come, draw. I will not draw, unless thou pulst thy death upon thee with a stroke. There's no one blow that thou canst give hath strength enough to kill me. Tempt me not so far, then. The power of earth shall not redeem thee. Aside. I must let him alone. He's stout and able. And to say the truth, however I may set a face and talk, I am not valiant. When I was a youth I kept my credit with a testy trick I had amongst cowards, but durst never fight. I will not promise to preserve your life if you do stay. Aside. I would give half my land that I durst fight with that proud man a little. If I had men to hold, I would beat him till he asked me mercy. Sir, will you be gone? Aside. I dare not stay, but I will go home and beat my servants all over for this. Exit Kalianax. This old fellow haunts me, but the distracted carriage of mine Amintor takes deeply on me. I will find the cause. I fear his conscience cries he wronged Aspasia. Enter Amintor. Aside. Men's eyes are not so subtle to perceive my inward misery. I bear my grief hid from the world. How art thou wretched then? 
for aught I know, all husbands are like me, and every one I talk with of his wife is but a well dissembler of his woes as I am. Would I knew it, for the rareness afflicts me now. Amintor, we have not enjoyed our friendship of late, for we were wont to charge our souls in talk. Melantius, I can tell thee a good jest of Strato and a lady the last day. How? Wast? Why such an odd one? I have longed to speak with you, not of an idle jest that's forced, but of matter you are bound to utter to me. What is that, my friend? I have observed. Your words fall from your tongue wildly, and all your carriage like one that strove to show his merry mood when he were ill-disposed. You were not wont to put such scorn into your speech, or wear upon your face ridiculous jollity. Some sadness sits here, which your cunning would cover o'er with smiles, and twill not be. What is it? A sadness here. What cause can fate provide for me to make me so? Am I not loved through all this isle? The king reigns greatness on me. Have I not received a lady to my bed that in her eye keeps mounting fire, and on her tender cheeks inevitable colour? in her heart a prison for all virtue are not you which is above all joys my constant friend what sadness can i have no i am light and feel the courses of my blood more warm and stirring than they were faith marry too and you will feel such unexpressed a joy in chaste embraces that you will indeed appear another you may shape amintor causes to cousin the whole world withal and yourself too but tis not like a friend to hide your soul from me tis not your nature to be thus idle i have seen you stand as you were blasted midst all of your mirth call thrice aloud and then start feigning joy so coldly world what do i hear a friend is nothing heaven I would have told that man my secret sins. I'll search an unknown land, and there plant friendship. All is withered here. Come with a compliment I would have fought, or told my friend he lied, ere soothed him so, out of my bosom. But there is nothing. Worse and worse. Farewell. From this time have acquaintance, but no friend. Melantius, stay. You shall know what that is. See how you played with friendship. Be advised how you give cause unto yourself to say you have lost a friend. Forgive what I have done, for I am so o'ergone with injuries unheard of that I lose consideration of what I ought to do. Oh, oh. <laughs> do not weep. What is't? May I once but know the man hath turned my friend thus. I had spoke at first, but that... But what? I held it most unfit for you to know. Faith do not know it yet. Thou seest my love, that will keep company with thee in tears. Hide nothing then from me, for when I know the cause of thy distemper, with mine own armour I'll adorn myself, my resolution, and cut through thy foes unto thy quiet, till I place thy heart as peaceable as spotless innocence. What is it? Why, tis this. It is too big to get out. Let my tears make way a while. Punish me strangely, heaven, if he escape of life or fame that brought this youth to this. Your sister. Well said. You'll wish it unknown when you have heard it. No. Is much to blame, and to the king has given her honour up, and lives in whoredom with him. How? This? Thou art run mad with injury, indeed. Thou couldst not utter this else. Speak again, for I forgive it freely. Tell thy griefs. She's wanton. I am loath to say a whore, though it be true. Speak yet again, before mine anger grow up beyond throwing down. What are thy griefs? By all our friendship, these. What? Am I tame? After mine actions... Shall the name of friend blot all our family and strike the brand of whore upon my sister unrevenged? 
my shaking flesh be thou a witness for me with what unwillingness i go to scourge this railer whom my folly hath called friend he draws his sword i will not take thee basely thy sword hangs near thy hand draw it that i may whip thy rashness to repentance draw thy sword not on thee did thine anger swell as high as the wild surges thou shouldst do me ease here and eternally if thy noble hand would cut me from my sorrows this is base and fearful they that use to utter lies provide not blows but words to qualify the men they wronged thou hast a guilty cause thou pleasest me for so much more like this will raise my anger up above my griefs which is a passion easier to be borne and i shall then be happy take then more to raise thine anger tis mere cowardice makes thee not draw and i will leave thee dead however but if thou art so much pressed with guilt and fear as not dare to fight i'll make thy memory loathe and fix a scandal upon thy name for ever then i draw as justly as our magistrates their swords to cut offenders off i knew before twould grate your ears but it was base in you to urge a weighty secret from your friend and then rage at it i shall be at ease if i be killed and if you fall by me i shall not long outlive you stay a while the name of friend is more than family or all the world besides i was a fool thou searching humane nature that didst wake to do me wrong thou art inquisitive and thrusts me upon questions that will take my sleep away would i had died ere known this sad dishonour pardon me my friend he sheathes his sword if thou wilt strike here is a faithful heart pierce it for i will never heave my hand to thine behold the power thou hast in me i do believe my sister is a whore a leprous one put up thy sword young man how should i bear it then she being so i fear my friend that you will lose me shortly and i shall do a foul action myself through these disgraces better half the land were buried quick together no amintor thou shalt have ease oh this adulterous king that drew her toot where got he the spirit to wrong me so what is it then to me if it be wrong to you why not so much the credit of our house is thrown away but from his iron den i'll waken death and hurl him on this king my honesty shall steal my sword and on its horrid point i'll wear my cause that shall amaze the eyes of this proud man and be too glittering for him to look on i have quite undone my fame dry up thy watery eyes and cast a manly look upon my face for nothing is so wild as i thy friend till i have freed thee still this swelling breast i go thus from thee and will never cease my vengeance till i find my heart at peace it must not be so stay mine eyes would tell how loath i am to this but love and tears leave me a while for i have hazarded all this world calls happy thou hast wrought a secret from me under name of friend which art could ne'er have found nor torture wrung from out my bosom give it me again for i will find it wheresoe'er it lies hid in the mortalest part invent a way to give it back why would you have it back i will to death pursue him with revenge therefore i call it back from thee for i know thy blood so high that thou wilt stir in this and shame me to posterity take to thy weapon hear thy friend that bears more years than thou i will not hear but draw or i am in tour draw then for i am full as resolute as fame and honour can enforce me be i cannot linger draw i do but is not my share of credit equal with thine if i do stir no for it will be called honour in thee to spill thy sister's blood if she her birth abuse and on the king a brave revenge but on me that have walked with patience in it it will fix the name of fearful cuckold oh that word be quick then join with me 
I dare not do a sin, or else I would. Be speedy. Then dare not fight with me, for that's a sin. His grief distracts him. Call thy thoughts again, and to thyself pronounce the name of friend, and see what that will work. I will not fight. You must. I will be killed first, though my passions offered the like to you. Tis not this earth shall buy my reason to it. Think a while, for you are, I must weep when I speak that, almost besides yourself. O oh, my soft temper, so many sweet words from thy sister's mouth, I am afraid would make me take her to embrace and pardon her. I am mad indeed, and know not what I do, yet have a care of me in what thou doest. Why thinks my friend I will forget his honour, or to save the bravery of our house will lose his fame and fear to touch the throne of majesty? A curse will follow that, but rather live and suffer with me. I will do what worth shall bid me, and no more. Faith I am sick, and desperately I hope, yet leaning thus I feel a kind of ease. Come, take again your mirth about you. I shall never do it. I warrant you, look up, we'll walk together. Put thine arm here, all shall be well again. Thy love, O oh, wretched I, thy love, Melantius, why, I have nothing else. Be merry, then. Exeunt Melantius and Amintor. Melantius returns. This worthy young man may do violence upon himself but I have cherished him to my best power, and sent him smiling from me to counterfeit again. Sword, hold thine edge. My heart will never fail me. Diphilus, thou comest as sent. Enter Diphilus. Yonder has been such laughing. Betwixt whom? Why, our sister and the king, I thought their spleens would break. They left us all out of the room. They must weep, Diphilus. Must they? They must. Thou art my brother, and if I did believe thou hadst a base thought, I would rip it out, lie where it durst. You should not. I would first mangle myself and find it. That was spoke according to our strain. Come, join thy hands to mine, and swear a firmness to what project I shall lay before thee. You wrong us both. People hereafter shall not say there passed a bond more than our loves to tie our lives and deaths together. It is as nobly said as I would wish. Anon I'll tell you wonders. We are wronged. But I will tell you now, we'll right ourselves. Stay not. Prepare the armor in my house. And what friends you can draw unto our side, not knowing of the cause, make ready too. Haste, Diphilus, the time requires it. Haste. Exit, Diphilus. I hope my cause is just. I know my blood tells me it is, and I will credit it. To take revenge and lose myself withal were idle, and escape impossible without I had the fort. Which misery! Remaining in the hands of my old enemy, Kalianax. But I must have it. Enter Kalianax. See, where he comes shaking by me. Good, my lord, forget your spleen to me. I never wronged you, but would have peace with every man. <laughs> Tis well. If I durst fight, your tongue would lie at quiet. You're touchy without all cause. Do mock me. By mine honour, I speak truth. Honour? Where is't? See what starts you make into your hatred to my love and freedom to you. I come with resolution to obtain a suit of you. A suit of me? Tis very like it should be granted, sir. Nay, go not hence. Tis this. You have the keeping of the fort, and I would wish you, by the love you ought to bear unto me, to deliver it into my hands. I am in hope that thou art mad to talk to me thus. But there is a reason to move you to it. I would kill the king that wronged you and your daughter. Out, traitor! Nay, but stay. I cannot scape the deed once done without I have this fort. And should I help thee? Now thy treacherous mind betrays itself. Come, delay me not. Give me a sudden answer, or already thy last is spoke. 
Refuse not offered love when it comes clad in secrets. Aside. Mm. If I say I will not, he will kill me. I do see it writ in his looks. And should I say I will, he'll run and tell the king. I do not shun your friendship, dear Melantius, but this cause is weighty. Give me but an hour to think. Take it. Aside. I know this goes unto the king, but I am armed. Exit Melantius. Oh, methinks I feel myself but twenty now again. This fighting fool wants policy. I shall revenge my girl and make her red again. I pray my legs will last that pace that I will carry them. I shall want breath before I find the king. Exit. End of Act Three. Act Four of The Maid's Tragedy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Maid's Tragedy by Francis Beaumont and John Fletcher. Act Four. Scene One. Enter Melantius, Evadne, and ladies. Save you. Save you, sweet brother. In my blunt eye, methinks you look Evadne. Come, you would make me blush. I would, Evadne. I shall displease my ends else. You shall, if you commend me. I am bashful. Come, sir, how do I look? I would not have your women hear me break into commendation of you. Tis not seemly. Go wait me in the gallery. Exeunt ladies. Now speak. I'll lock the door first. Why? I will not have your gilded things that dance in visitation with their millen skins choke up my business. You are strangely disposed, sir. Good madam, not to make you merry. No, if you praise me, twill make me sad. Such a sad commendation I have for you. <laughs> Brother, the court hath made you witty and learn to riddle. I praise the court for't. Has it learned you nothing? Me? Ay, Evadne, thou art young and handsome, a lady of a sweet complexion, and such a flowing carriage that it cannot choose but inflame a kingdom. <sighs> gentle brother! Tis yet in thy remembrance, foolish woman, to make me gentle. How is this? Tis base, and I could blush at these years through all my honoured scars to come to such a parley. I understand you not. You dare not, fool. They that commit thy faults fly the remembrance. My faults, sir? I would have you know I care not if they were written here, here in my forehead. Thy body is too little for the story, the lusts of which would fill another woman, though she had twins within her. This is saucy. Look, you intrude no more. There lies your way. Thou art my way, and I will tread upon thee till I find truth out. What truth is that you look for? Thy long-lost honour. Would the gods had set me one of their loudest bolts. Come, tell me quickly, do it without enforcement, and take heed you swell me not above my temper. How, sir? Where got you this report? Where there was people in every place. They and the seconds of it are base people. Believe them not, they lied. Do not play with mine anger. Do not, wretch. I come to know that desperate fool that drew thee from thy fair life. Be wise, and lay him open. Unhand me, and learn manners. Such another forgetfulness forfeits your life. Quench me this mighty humour, and then tell me whose whore you are. For you are one, I know it. Let all mine honours perish, but I'll find him though he lie locked up in thy blood. Be sudden. There is no facing it, and be not flattered. The burnt air when the dog reigns is not fouler than thy contagious name. Till thy repentance, if the gods grant thee any, purge thy sickness. Be gone. You are my brother. That's your safety. I'll be a wolf first. Tis to be thy brother, an infamy below the sin of a coward. I am as far from being part of thee as thou art from thy virtue. Seek a kindred among sensual beasts, and make a goat thy brother. A goat is cooler. 
will you tell me yet? If you stay here and rail thus, I shall tell you I'll how you whipped. Get you to your command, and there preach to your sentinels, and tell them what a brave man you are. I shall laugh at you. You are grown a glorious whore. Where be your fighters? What mortal fool durst raise thee to this daring, and I alive? By my just sword, had safer bestride a billow when the angry north ploughs up the sea, or made heaven's fire his food. Work me no higher. Will you discover yet? Oh, the fellow's mad. Sleep and speak sense. Force my swollen heart no further. I would save thee. Your great maintainers are not here. They dare not. Would they were all and armed, I would speak loud. Here's one should thunder to em. Will you tell me? Thou hast no hope to scape. He that dares most and damns away his soul to do thee service will sooner fetch meat from a hungry lion than come to rescue thee. Thou hast death about thee. Has undone thine honour, poisoned thy virtue, and of a lovely rose left thee a canker. Let me consider. Do, whose child thou wert, whose honour thou hast murdered, whose grave opened, and so pulled on the gods that in their justice they must restore him flesh again and life, and raise his dry bones to revenge his scandal. The gods are not of my mind. They had better let him lie sweet still in the earth. They'll stink here. Do you raise mirth out of my easiness? Forsake me, then, all weaknesses of nature that make men women. Speak, you whore, speak truth, or by the dear soul of thy sleeping father this sword shall be thy lover. Tell, or I'll kill thee. And when thou hast told all, thou wilt deserve it. You will not murder me. No, tis a justice and a noble one to put the light out of such base offenders. Oh, help! By thy foul self, no humane help shall help thee if thou criest. When I have killed thee as I have vowed to do if thou confessed not, naked as thou hast left thine honour will I leave thee, that on thy branded flesh the world may read thy black shame and my justice. Wilt thou bend yet? Yes. Up, and begin your story. Oh, I am miserable. Tis true thou art. Speak truth still. I have offended, noble sir. Forgive me. With what secure slave? Do not ask me, sir. Mine own remembrance is a misery too mighty for me. Do not fall back again. My sword's unsheathed yet. What shall I do? Be true, and make your fault less. I dare not tell. Tell, or I'll be this day a-killing thee. Will you forgive me, then? Stay. I must ask mine honour first. I have too much foolish nature in me. Speak. Is there none else here? None but a fearful conscience. That's too many. Who is t? Oh, hear me gently. It was the king. No more. My worthy fathers and my services are liberally rewarded. King. I thank thee. For all my dangers and my wounds thou hast paid me in my own metal. These are soldiers' thanks. How long have you lived thus, Evadne? Too long. Too late you find it. Can you be sorry? Would I were half as blameless. Evadne, thou wilt to thy trade again. First to my grave. Would God that's been so blessed. Dost thou not hate this king now? Prithee, hate him. Couldst thou not curse him? I command thee, curse him. Curse till the gods hear, and deliver him to thy just wishes. Yet I fear, Evadne, you had rather play your game out. No, I feel too many sad confusions here to let in any loose flame hereafter. 
dost thou not feel amongst all those one brave anger that breaks out nobly and directs thine arm to kill this base king all the gods forbid it no all the gods require it they are dishonoured in him oh, tis too fearful you are valiant in his bed and bold enough to be a stale whore and have your madam's name discourse for grooms and pages and hereafter when his cool majesty hath laid you by to be at pension with some needy sir for meat and coarser clothes thus far you know no fear come you shall kill him good sir and twere to kiss him dead thou'd smother him be wise and kill him canst thou live and know what noble minds shall make thee see thyself found out with every finger made the shame of all successions and in this great ruin thy brother and thy noble husband broken thou shalt not live thus kneel and swear to help me when i shall call thee to it or by all holy in heaven and earth thou shalt not live to breathe a full hour longer not a thought come tis a righteous oath give me thy hand and both to heaven held up swear by that wealth this lustful thief stole from thee when i say it to let his foul soul out here i swear it and all you spirits of abused ladies help me in this performance enough this must be known to none but you and i evadne not to your lord though he be wise and noble and a fellow dares step as far into a worthy action as the most daring ay as far as justice ask me not why farewell exit melantius would i could say so to my black disgrace oh where have i been all this time how friended that i should lose myself thus desperately and none for pity show me how i wandered there is not in the compass of the light a more unhappy creature sure i am monstrous for i have done those follies those mad mischiefs would dare a woman enter a mentor o oh, my loaden soul be not so cruel to me choke not up the way to my repentance o oh, my lord how now my much abused lord she kneels to him this cannot be i do not kneel to live i dare not hope it the wrongs i did are greater look upon me though i appear with all my faults stand up this is no new way to beget more sorrows heaven knows i have too many do not mock me though i am tame and bred up with my wrongs which are my foster brothers i may leap like a hand-wolf into my natural wildness and do an outrage prithee do not mock me my whole life is so leprous it infects all my repentance i would buy your pardon though at the highest set even with my life that slight contrition that's no sacrifice for what i have committed sure i dazzle there cannot be a faith in that foul woman that knows no god more mighty than her mischiefs thou dost still worst still number on thy faults to press my poor heart thus can i believe there's any seed of virtue in that woman left to shoot up that dares go on in sin known and so known as thine is o oh, evadne would there were any safety in thy sex that i might put a thousand sorrows off and credit thy repentance but i must not thou hast brought me to the dull calamity to that strange misbelief of all the world and all things that are in it that i fear i shall fall like a tree and find my grave only remembering that i grieve my lord give me your griefs you are an innocent a soul as white as heaven let not my sins perish your noble youth i do not fall here to shadow by dissembling with my tears as all say women can or to make less what my hot will hath done which heaven and you knows to be tougher than the hand of time can cut from man's remembrance no i do not i do appear the same the same evadne dressed in the shames i lived in the same monster but these are names of honour to what i am 
I do present myself the foulest creature, most poisonous, dangerous, and despised of men, learner ere bred or nihilus. I am hell. Till you, my dear lord, shoot your light into me, the beams of your forgiveness, I am soul-sick, and wither with the fear of one condemned till I have got your pardon. Rise, Evadne. Those heavenly powers that put this good into thee, grant a continuance of it, I forgive thee. Make thyself worthy of it, and take heed, take heed, Evadne, this be serious. Mock not the powers above, that can and dare give thee a great example of their justice to all ensuing eyes, if thou playest with thy repentance the best sacrifice. I have done nothing good to win belief. My life hath been so faithless. All the creatures made for heaven's honours have their ends, and good ones, all but the cousining crocodiles, false women. They reign here like those plagues, those killing sores men pray against, and when they die like tales ill-told and unbelieved, they pass away, and go to dust forgotten. But, my lord, those short days I shall number to my rest, as many must not see me, shall, though too late, though in my evening, yet perceive a will, since I can do no good because a woman, reach constantly at something that is near it. I will redeem one minute of my age, or like another Niobe I'll weep till I am water. I am now dissolved, my frozen soul melts, may each sin thou hast find a new mercy. Rise, I am at peace. She rises. Hadst thou been thus, thus excellently good, before that devil king tempted thy frailty? Sure thou hadst made a star, give me thy hand. From this time I will know thee, and as far as honour gives me leave, be thy Amintor. When we next meet, I will salute thee fairly, and pray the gods to give thee happy days. My charity shall go along with thee, though my embraces must be far from thee. I should have killed thee, but this sweet repentance locks up my vengeance, for which thus I kiss thee. The last kiss we must take, and would to heaven the holy priest that gave our hands together, had given us equal virtues. Go, Evadne, the gods thus part our bodies. Have a care, my honour falls no farther. I am well, then. All the dear joys here, and above hereafter, crown thy fair soul. Thus I take leave, my lord, and never shall you see the foul of Adne, till she have tried all honoured means that may set her in rest, and wash her stains away. Exeunt. Scene two. Banquet. Enter the king and Calianax. Hoboys play within. I cannot tell how I should credit this from you that are his enemy. I am sure he said it to me and i'll justify it what way he dares oppose but with my sword but did he break without all circumstance to you his foe that he would have the fort to kill me and then escape if he deny it i'll make him blush it sounds incredibly ay so does everything i say of late not so calianax yes i should sit mute while a rogue with strong arms cuts your throat well i will try him and if this be true i'll pawn my life i'll find it if it be false and that you clothe your hate in such a lie you shall hereafter dote in your own house not in the court why if it be a lie mine ears are false for i'll be sworn i heard it old men are good for nothing you were best put me to death for hearing and free him for meaning of it you would have trusted me once but time is altered and will still where i may do with justice to the world you have no witness yes myself no more i mean there were that heard it how no more would you have more why am not i enough to hang a thousand rogues but so you may hang honest men too if you please no i may tis like i will do so there are a hundred will swear it for a need too if i say it such witnesses we need not and tis hard if my word cannot hang a boisterous knave enough where's strato enter strato 
sir why where's all the company call a mentorian evadne where's my brother and melantius bid him come too and diphilus call all that are without there exit strato if he should desire the combat of you tis not in the power of all our laws to hinder it unless we mean to quit him why if you think tis fit an old man and a counsellor to fight for what he says then you may grant it enter a mentor evadne melantius diphilus lysippus cleon and strato come sirs a mentor thou art yet a bridegroom and i will use thee so thou shalt sit down evadne sit and you a mentor too this banquet is for you sir they all sit at the table who has brought a merry tale about him to raise a laughter amongst our wine why strato where art thou thou wilt chop out with them unseasonably when i desire em not tis my ill luck sir so to spend them then reach me a bowl of wine melantius to a mentor thou art sad i should be sir the merriest here but i have ne'er a story of mine own worth telling at this time give me the wine melantius i am now considering how easy twere for any man we trust to poison one of us in such a bowl i think it were not hard sir for a knave such as you are if faith twere easy it becomes us well to get plain-dealing men about ourselves such as you all are here a mentor to thee and to thy fair evadne aside have you thought of this calianax aside yes marry have i and what's your resolution ye you shall have it soundly reach to a mentor strato strato passes the king's bowl of wine to a mentor here my love this wine will do thee wrong for it will set blushes upon thy cheeks until thou dost a fault twere pity yet i wonder much of the strange desperation of these men that dare attempt such acts here in our state he could not escape that did it were he known impossible it would be known melantius it ought to be if he got then away he must wear all our lives upon his sword he need not fly the island he must leave no one alive no i think no man could kill me and scape clear but that old man but i heaven bless me i should i my liege i do not think thou wouldst but yet thou mightst for thou hast in thy hands the means to scape by keeping of the fort he has melantius and he has kept it well from cobwebs sir tis clean swept i can find no other art in keeping of it now twas ne'er besieged since he commanded i shall be sure of your good word but i have kept it safe from such as you keep your ill temper in i speak no malice had my brother kept it i should have said as much you are not merry brother drink wine sit you all still aside to calianax i cannot trust this i have thrown out words that would have fetched warm blood upon the cheeks of guilty men and he is never moved he knows no such thing impudence may scape when feeble virtue is accused he must if he were guilty feel an alteration at this our whisper whilst we point at him you see he does not let him hang himself what care i what he does this he did say melantius you cannot easily conceive what i have meant for men that are in fault can subtly apprehend when others aim at what they do amiss but i forgive freely before this man heaven do so too i will not touch thee so much as with shame of telling it let it be so no more ay this is very fine i cannot tell what tis you mean but i am apt enough rudely to thrust into ignorant fault but let me know it haply tis naught but misconstruction and where i am clear i will not take forgiveness of the gods much less of you nay if you stand so stiff i shall call back my mercy i want smoothness to thank a man for pardoning of a crime i never knew not to instruct your knowledge but to show you my ears are everywhere you meant to kill me and get the fort to scape pardon me sir my bluntness will be pardoned 
you preserve a race of idle people here about you eaters and talkers to defame the worth of those that do things worthy the man that uttered this had perished without food be it who it will but for this arm that fenced him from the foe and if i thought you gave a faith to this the plainness of my nature would speak more give me a pardon for you ought to do't to kill him that spake this aside ay that will be the end of all then am i fairly paid for all my care and service that old man who calls me enemy and of whom i though i will never match my hate so low have no good thought would yet i think excuse me and swear he thought me wronged in this who i thou shameless fellow didst thou not speak to me of it thyself oh then it came from him from me who should it come from but from me nay i believe your malice is enough but i ha lost my anger sir i hope you are well satisfied lysippus cheer a mentor and his lady there's no sound comes from you i will come and do it myself you have done already sir for me i thank you melanthius i do credit this from him how slight so e'er you make it tis strange you should tis strange he should believe an old man's word that never lied in his life i talk not to thee shall the wild words of this distempered man frantic with age and sorrow make a breach betwixt your majesty and me twas wrong to hearken to him but to credit him as much at least as i have power to bear but pardon me whilst i speak only truth i may commend myself i have bestowed my careless blood with you and should be loath to think an action that would make me lose that and my thanks too when i was a boy i thrust myself into my country's cause and did a deed that plucked five years from time and styled me man then and for you my king your subjects all have fed by virtue of my arm this sword of mine hath ploughed the ground and reaped the fruit in peace and yourself have lived at home in ease so terrible i grew that without swords my name hath fetched you conquest and my heart and limbs are still the same my will is great to do you service let me not be paid with such a strange distrust melanthius i held it great injustice to believe thine enemy and did not if i did i do not let that satisfy what struck with sadness all more wine a few fine words have overthrown my truth ah oh, thou art a villain aside why thou wert better let me have the fort dotard i will disgrace thee thus for ever there shall no credit lie upon thy words think better and deliver it my liege he's at me now again to do it speak deny it if thou canst examine him while he's hot for he'll cool again he will forswear it this is lunacy i hope melanthius he hath lost himself much since his daughter missed the happiness my sister gained and though he call me foe i pity him pity a ah, pox on you mark his disordered words and at the mask diagoras knows he raged and railed at me and called a lady whore so innocent she understood him not but it becomes both you and me too to forgive distraction pardon him as i do i'll not speak for thee for all thy cunning to the king if you will be safe chop off his head for there was never known so impudent a rascal some that love him get him to bed why pity should not let age make itself contemptible we must be all old have him away calianax the king believes you come you shall go home and rest you are done well you'll give it up when i've used you thus a month i hope now now tis plain sir he does move me still he says he knows i'll give him up the fort when he has used me thus a month i am mad am i not still <laughs> <laughs> i shall be mad indeed if you do thus 
"'Why would you trust a sturdy fellow there, "'that has no virtue in him, all's in his sword, before me? "'Do but take his weapons from him, and he's a ass, "'and I am a very fool both with him and without him, as you use me.' <laughs> Tis well, Calyanax, but if you use this once again, I shall entreat some other to see your offices be well discharged. Be merry, gentlemen, it grows somewhat late. Amintar, thou wouldst be abed again. Yes, sir. And you, Evadne, let me take thee in my arms, Melantheus, and believe thou art as thou deservest to be, my friend still and for ever. Good Calyanax, sleep soundly. It will bring thee to thyself. Exeunt all but Melantius and Calyanax. Sleep soundly. I sleep soundly. Now I hope I could not be thus else. How darest thou stay alone with me, knowing how thou hast used me? You cannot blast me with your tongue, and that's the strongest part you have about you. I do look for some great punishment for this. For I begin to forget all my hate, and take it unkindly, that mine enemy should use me so extraordinarily scurvily. I shall melt, too, if you begin to take unkindnesses. I never meant you hurt. Thou'lt anger me again, thou wretched rogue. Meant me no hurt. Disgrace me with the king. Lose all my offices. This is no hurt, is it? I prithee, what dost thou call hurt? To poison men because they love me not, to call the credit of men's wives in question, to murder children betwixt me and land, this is all hurt. All this thou think'st is sport, for mine is worse. But use thy will with me, for betwixt grief and anger I could cry. Be wise, then, and be safe. Thou mayst revenge. I, of the king, I would revenge of thee. That you must plot yourself. I am a fine plotter. The short is, I will hold thee with the king in this perplexity, till peevishness and thy disgrace have laid thee in thy grave. But if thou wilt deliver up the fort, I'll take thy trembling body in my arms and bear thee over dangers. Thou shalt hold thy wanted state. If I should tell the king, canst thou deny it again? Try and believe. Nay, then, thou canst bring anything about. Thou shalt have the fort. Why, well, here let our hate be buried, and this hand shall right us both. Give me thy aged breast to compass. Nay, I do not love thee yet. I cannot well endure to look on thee. And if I thought it were a courtesy, thou shouldst not have it. But I am disgraced. My offices are to be ta'en away. And if I did but hold this for to-day, I do believe the king would take it from me and give it thee. Things are so strangely carried. Ne'er thank me for it, but yet the king shall know there was some such thing in it I told him of, and that I was an honest man. He'll buy that knowledge very dearly. Enter Diphilus. What news with thee? This were a night indeed to do it in. The king hath sent for her. She shall perform it, then. Go, Diphilus, and take from this good man my worthy friend, the fort. He'll give it thee. How you got that? Art thou of the same breed? Canst thou deny this to the king, too? With a confidence as great as his. Faith, like enough. Away, and use him kindly. Touch me not. I hate the whole strain. If thou follow me a great way off, I'll give thee up the fort, and hang yourselves. Be gone. He's finely wrought. Exeunt Calyanax and Diphilus. This is a night in spite of astronomers to do the deed in. I will wash the stain that rests upon our house off with his blood. Enter a mentor. Melantius, now assist me if thou beest that which thou sayest. Assist me. I have lost all my distempers, and have found a rage so pleasing. Help me. Aside. Who can see him thus, and not swear vengeance? What's the matter, friend? 
out with thy sword and hand in hand with me rush to the chamber of this hated king and sink him with the weight of all his sins to hell for ever twere a rash attempt not to be done with safety let your reason plot your revenge and not your passion if thou refusest me in these extremes thou art no friend he sent for her to me by heaven to me myself and i must tell ye i love her as a stranger there is worth in that vile woman worthy things melantius and she repents i'll do it myself alone though i be slain farewell aside he'll overthrow my whole design with madness a mentor think what thou dost i dare as much as valour but tis the king the king the king a mentor with whom thou fightest aside i know he's honest and this will work with him i cannot tell what thou hast said but thou hast charmed my sword out of my hand and left me shaking here defenceless i will take it up for thee what a wild beast is uncollected man the thing that we call honour bears us all headlong unto sin and yet itself is nothing alas how variable are thy thoughts just like my fortunes i was run to that i purpose to have child thee for some plot i did distrust thou hadst against the king by that old fellow's carriage but take heed there is not the least limb growing to a king but carries thunder in it i have none against him why come then and still remember we may not think revenge i will remember exeunt End of Act 4《Five of the Maid's Tragedy》This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Maid's Tragedy by Francis Beaumont and John Fletcher. Act V. Scene I. Enter Evadne and a gentleman. Sir, is the king abed? Madam, an hour ago. Give me the key then, and let none be near. Tis the king's pleasure. I understand you, madam, would twere mine. I must not wish good rest unto your ladyship. You talk, you talk. Tis all I dare do, madam, but the king will wake, and then— Saving your imagination, pray good night, sir. A good night be it then, and a long one, madam. I am gone. Exit, gentlemen. The night grows horrible and all about me like my black purpose. Oh, the conscience of a lost virgin! Whither wilt thou pull me? To what things dismal as the depth of hell wilt thou provoke me? Let no woman dare from this hour be disloyal. If her heart be flesh, if she have blood and can fear, Tis a daring above that desperate fool's that left his peace and went to sea to fight. Tis so many sins an age cannot prevent em, and so great the gods want mercy for. Yet I must through em. I have begun a slaughter on my honour, and I must end it there. She draws the curtain to reveal the king, asleep in his bed. He sleeps. O oh God, why give you peace to this intemperate beast that hath so long transgressed you? I must kill him, and I will do it bravely. The mere joy tells me I merit in it. Yet I must not thus tamely do it as he sleeps. That were to rock him to another world. My vengeance shall take him waking and then lay before him the number of his wrongs and punishments. I'll shape his sins like furies, till I waken his evil angel, his sick conscience, and then I'll strike him dead." She ties his arms to the bed. "'King, by your leave, I dare not trust your strength. Your grace and I must grapple upon even terms no more.' So. If he rail me not from my resolution, as I believe he shall not, I shall fit him. My lord the king? My lord? 
He sleeps as if he meant to wake no more. My lord! Is he not dead already? Sir! My lord! Who's that? Oh, you sleep soundly, sir. My dear Evadne, I have been dreaming of thee. Come to bed. I am come at length, sir. But how welcome! What pretty new device is this, Evadne? What, do you tie me to you by my love? This is a quaint one. Come, my dear, and kiss me. I'll be thy Mars. To bed, my queen of love. Let us be caught together, that the gods may see and envy our embraces. Stay, sir, stay. You are too hot, and I have brought you physic to temper your high veins. Prithee to bed, then. Let me take it warm. There thou shalt know the state of my body better. I know you have a surfeited foul body, and you must bleed. Bleed? She draws a dagger. Ay, you shall bleed. Lie still, and if the devil your lust will give you leave, repent. This steel comes to redeem the honour that you stole, King, my fair name, which nothing but thy death can answer to the world. How's this, Evadne? I am not she, nor bear I in this breast so much cold spirit to be called a woman. I am a tiger, I am anything that knows not pity. Stir not! If thou dost, I'll take thee unprepared, thy fears upon thee that make thy sins look double, and so send thee, by my revenge I will, to look those torments prepared for such black souls. Thou dost not mean this. Tis impossible. Thou art too sweet and gentle. No, I am not. I am as foul as thou art, and can number as many such hells here. I was once fair, once I was lovely, not a blowing rose more chastely sweet. Till thou, thou, thou foul canker, stir not, didst poison me. I was a world of virtue, till your cursed court, and you, hell bless you for it, with your temptations on temptations, made me give up mine honour. For which, King, I am come to kill thee. No! I am. Thou art not. I prithee speak not these things. Thou art gentle, and wert not meant thus rugged. Peace, and hear me. Stir nothing but your tongue, and that for mercy to those above us, by whose lights I vow, those blessed fires that shot to see our sin. If thy hot soul had substance with thy blood, I would kill that too, which being past my steel my tongue shall reach. Thou art a shameless villain, a thing out of the overcharge of nature, sent like a thick cloud to disperse a plague upon weak-catching women such a tyrant that for his lust would sell away his subjects, I, all his heaven hereafter. Here, Evadne, thou soul of sweetness, here, I am thy king. Thou art my shame. Lie still, there's none about you within your cries, all promises of safety are but deluding dreams. She stabs him. Thus, thus, thou foul man! Thus I begin my vengeance. Hold, Evadne, I do command thee, hold. I do not mean, sir, to part so fairly with you. We must change more of these love tricks yet. What bloody villainy provoked thee to this murder? Thou, thou monster, she stabs him. Oh! Thou kept'st me brave at court, and whored me, king then married me to a young noble gentleman, and whored me still. Evadne, pity me. Hell take me, then. She stabs him. This for my lord Amintor, this for my noble brother, and this stroke for the most wronged of women. Oh, I die. Die all our faults together. I forgive thee. Evadne draws the curtain across the bed, and exits. Enter two gentlemen. Come now, she's gone. Let's enter. The king expects it, and will be angry. Ah, oh, tis a fine wench. We'll have a snap at her one of these nights as she goes from him. Content. How quickly he had done with her. 
I see kings can do no more that way than other mortal people. They draw the curtain, revealing the king's dead body in bed. How fast he is! I cannot hear him breathe. Either the tapers give a feeble light, or he looks very pale. And so he does. Pray heaven he be well. Let's look. Alas! He's stiff, wounded, and dead. Treason! Treason! Run forth and call. Treason! Treason! Exit, second gentleman. This will be laid on us. Who can believe a woman could do this? Enter Cleon and Lysippus. How now? Where's the traitor? Fled. Fled away. But there her woeful act lies still. Her act? A woman? Where's the body? There. Farewell, thou worthy man. There were two bonds that tied our loves, a brother and a king, the least of which might fetch a flood of tears. But such the misery of greatness is, they have no time to mourn. Then pardon me. Enter Strato. Sirs, which way went she? Never follow her, for she, alas, was but the instrument. News is now brought in that Melantius has got the fort, and stands upon the wall, and with a loud voice calls those few that pass at this dead time of night, delivering the innocent of this act. Gentlemen, I am your king. We do acknowledge it. I would I were not. Follow all. For this must have a sudden stop. Exeunt. Scene two. Enter Melantius, Diphilus, and Calianax on the walls. If the dull people can believe I am armed, be constant, Diphilus. Now we have time either to bring our banished honours home or create new ones in our ends. I fear not. My spirit lies not in that way. Courage, Calianax. Would I had any, you should quickly know it. Speak to the people. Thou art eloquent. Tis a fine eloquence to come to the gallows. You were born to be my end. The devil take you. Now I must hang for my company. It is strange I should be old, and neither wise nor valiant. Enter King Lysippus, Diagoras, Cleon, Strato, and guards. See where he stands as boldly confident as though he had his full command about him. He looks as if he had the better cause. Sir, under your gracious pardon, let me speak it. Though he be mighty spirited and forward to all great things, to all things of that danger worse men shake at the telling of, yet certainly I do believe him noble, and this action rather pulled on than sought. His mind was ever as worthy as his hand. Tis my fear, too. Heaven forgive all. Summon him, Lord Cleon. Ho! From the walls there! Worthy Cleon, welcome. We could have wished you here, Lord. You are honest. Aside. Well, thou art as flattering a knave, though I dare not tell thee so. Melantius? Sir? I am sorry that we meet thus. Our old love never required such distance. Pray heaven you have not left yourself and sought this safety more out of fear than honour. You have lost a noble master, which your faith, Melantius, some think might have preserved. Yet you know best. Royal young man, whose tears look lovely on thee. Had they been shed for a deserving one, they had been lasting monuments. Thy brother, Whilst he was good, I called him king, and served him with that strong faith, that most unwearied valour, pulled people from the farthest sun to seek him, and by his friendship I was then his soldier. But since his hot pride drew him to disgrace me, and brand my noble actions with his lust, that never cured dishonour of my sister, base stain of whore, and which is worse, the joy to make it still so, like myself. Thus have I flung him off with my allegiance, and stand here mine own justice, to revenge what I have suffered in him, and this old man, wronged almost to lunacy. Who, I? You draw me in? I had no wrong. 
I do disclaim ye all. The short is this. Tis no ambition to lift up myself urgeth me thus. I do desire again to be a subject, so I may be freed. If not, I know my strength, and will unbuild this goodly town. Be speedy, and be wise in a reply. To Lysippus. Be sudden, sir, to tie all again. What's done is past recall, and past you to revenge. And there are thousands that wait for such a troubled hour as this. Throw him the blank. Melantius, write in that thy choice. My seal is at it. He throws up a document. It was our honour drew us to this act, not gain, and we will only work our pardon. Put my name in, too. You disclaimed us all but now, Callianax. That's all one. I'll not be hanged hereafter by a trick. I'll have it in. You shall, you shall. Come to the back gate, and we'll call you king and give you up the fort. Away! Away! Exeunt. Scene three. Enter Aspatia, dressed in man's apparel. This is my fatal hour. Heaven may forgive my rash attempt, that causelessly hath laid griefs on me that will never let me rest, and put a woman's heart into my breast. It is more honour for you that I die, for she that can endure the misery that I have on me, and be patient too, may live, and laugh at all that you can do. Enter a servant. God save you, sir. And you, sir, what's your business? With you, sir, now, to do me the office to help me to your lord. What? Would you serve him? I'll do him any service, but to haste, for my affairs are earnest, I desire to speak with him. Sir, because you are in such haste, I would be loath to delay you any longer. You cannot. It shall become you, though, to tell your lord. Sir, he will speak with nobody. This is most strange. Art thou gold-proof? There's for thee. Help me to him. Pray not be angry, sir. I'll do my best. Exit, servant. How stubbornly this fellow answered me! There is a vile dishonest trick in man, more than in women. All the men I meet appear thus to me, are harsh and rude, and have a subtlety in everything, which love could never know. But we fond women harbour the easiest and smoothest thoughts, and think all shall go so. It is unjust that men and women should be matched together. Enter a mentor and his servant. Where is he? There, my lord. What would you, sir? Please it your lordship to command your man out of the room. I shall deliver things worthy your hearing. Leave us. Exit servant. Aside. Oh, that this shape should bury falsehood in it. Now your will, sir. When you know me, my lord, you needs must guess my business. And I am not hard to know. For till the change of war marked this smooth face with these few blemishes, people would call me my sister's picture, and her mine. In short, I am the brother to the wronged Aspatia. The wronged Aspatia? Would thou wert so too unto the wronged Amintor? Let me kiss that hand of thine in honour that I bear unto the wronged Aspatia. Here I stand that did it. Would he could not, gentle youth, leave me, for there is something in thy looks that calls my sins in a most hideous form into my mind, and I have grief enough without thy help. I would I could with credit. Since I was twelve years old I had not seen my sister till this hour. I now arrived. She sent for me to see her marriage. A woeful one. But they that are above have ends in everything. She used few words, but yet enough to make me understand the baseness of the injury you did her. That little training I have had is war. I may behave myself rudely in peace. I would not, though. I shall not need to tell you I am but young, and you would be loath to lose honour that is not easily gained again. Fairly I mean to deal. The age is strict for single combats, and we shall be stopped if it be published. If you like your sword, use it. If mine appear a better to you, change, for the ground is this, and this the time to end our difference. Charitable youth, if thou beest such, think not I will maintain so strange a wrong, and for thy sister's sake. Know that I could not think that desperate thing I durst not do, yet to enjoy this world I would not see her, for beholding thee I am I know not what. 
if I have aught that may content thee, take it and be gone, for death is not so terrible as thou, thine eyes shoot guilt into me. Thus she swore thou wouldst behave thyself, and give me words that would fetch tears into mine eyes, and so thou dost indeed. But yet she bade me watch, lest I were cousined, and be sure to fight ere I returned. That must not be with me, for her I'll die directly, but against her will never hazard it. You must be urged. I do not deal uncivilly with those that dare to fight, but such a one as you must be used thus. She strikes him. Prithee, youth, take heed. Thy sister is a thing to me so much above mine honour that I can endure all this. Good gods, a blow I can endure, but stay not, lest thou draw a timely death upon myself. Thou art some prating fellow, one that hath studied out a trick to talk and move soft-hearted people, to be kicked, thus to be kicked. She kicks him. Aside. Why should he be so slow in giving me my death? A man can bear no more and keep his flesh. Forgive me, then. I would endure yet if I could. Now show the spirit thou pretendest, and understand thou hast no hour to live. They fight. Aspatia is wounded and falls to the ground. What dost thou mean? Thou canst not fight. The blows thou makest at me are quite besides, and those I offer at thee thou spreadst thine arms, and takest upon thy breast, alas, defenceless. I have got enough, and my desire. There's no place so fit for me to die as here. Enter Evadne with bloody hands, carrying a knife. Amintor, I am loaded with events that fly to make thee happy. I have joys that in a moment can call back thy wrongs, and settle thee in thy free state again. It is Evadne still that follows thee, but not her mischiefs. Thou canst not fool me to believe again, but thou hast looks and things so full of news that I am stayed. Noble Amintor, put off thy amaze, let thine eyes loose and speak. Am I not fair? Looks not Evadne beauteous within these rites now? Were those hours half so lovely in thine eyes when our hands met before the holy man? I was too foul within to look fair then. Since I knew ill, I was not free till now. There is presage of some important thing about thee, which it seems thy tongue hath lost. Thy hands are bloody, and thou hast a knife. In this consists thy happiness and mine. Joy to a mentor, for the king is dead. Those have most power to hurt us that we love. We lay our sleeping lives within their arms. Why, thou hast raised up mischief to this height, and found out one to outname thy other faults. Thou hast no intermission of thy sins, but all thy life is a continual ill. Black is thy colour now, diseased thy nature. Joy to our mentor, thou hast touched a life, the very name of which has power to chain up all my rage and calm my wildest wrongs. Tis done, and since I could not find a way to meet thy love so clear, as through his life I cannot now repent it. Couldst thou procure the gods to speak to me, to bid me love this woman, and forgive? I think I should fall out with them. Behold, here lies a youth whose wounds bleed in my breast, sent by his violent fate to fetch his death from my slow hand. And to augment my woe, you now are present stained with a king's blood violently shed. This keeps night here, and throws an unknown wilderness about me. Oh! 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 No more, pursue me not. Forgive me, then, and take me to thy bed. We may not part. Forbear, be wise, and let my rage go this way. Tis you that I would stay, not it. Take heed, it will return with me. If it must be, I shall not fear to meet it. Take me home. Thou monster of cruelty, forbear. Evadne kneels. For heaven's sake, look more calm. Thine eyes are sharper than thou canst make thy sword. Away, away, thy knees are more to me than violence. I am worse than sick to see knees follow me, for that I must not grant, for heaven's sake, stand. Receive me, then. I dare not stay thy language. 
in midst of all my anger and my grief thou dost awake something that troubles me and says i love thee once i dare not stay there is no end of woman's reasoning he leaves her amento thou shalt love me once again go i am calm farewell and peace for ever evadne whom thou hatest will die for thee she stabs herself a mentor returns i have a little humane nature yet that's left for thee that bids me stay thy hand thy hand was welcome but came too late oh i am lost the heavy sleep makes haste she dies oh 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 this earth of mine doth tremble and i feel a stark affrighted motion in my blood my soul grows weary of her house and i all over am a trouble to myself there is some hidden power in these dead things that calls my flesh into em i am cold be resolute and bear em company there's something yet which i am loath to leave there's man enough in me to meet the fears that death can bring and yet would it were done i can find nothing in the whole discourse of death i durst not meet the boldest way yet still betwixt the reason and the act the wrong i to aspatia did stands up i have not such a fault to answer though she may justly arm with scorn and hate of me my soul will part less troubled when i have paid to her in tears my sorrow i will not leave this act unsatisfied if all that's left in me can answer it was it a dream there stands a minter still or i dream still how dost thou speak receive my love and help thy blood climbs up to his old place again there's hope of thy recovery did you not name aspatia i did and talked of tears and sorrow unto her tis true until these happy signs in thee did stay my course twas thither i was going thou art there already and these wounds are hers those threats i brought with me sought not revenge but came to fetch this blessing from thy hand i am aspatia yet dare my soul ever look abroad again i shall live a minter i am well a kind of healthful joy wanders within me the world wants lines to excuse thy loss come let me bear thee to some place of help a minter thou must stay i must rest here my strength begins to disobey my will how dost thou my best soul i would fain live now if i could wouldst thou have loved me then alas all that i am's not worth a hair from thee give me thy hand mine hands grope up and down and cannot find thee i am wondrous sick have i thy hand aminter thou greatest blessing of the world thou hast i do believe thee better than my sense oh i must go farewell she dies she swoons aspatia help for heaven's sake water such as may chain life for ever to this frame aspatia speak what no help yet i fool i'll chafe her temples yet there's nothing stirs some hidden power tell her that amintor calls and let her answer me aspatia speak i have heard if there be life but bow the body thus and it will show itself oh she is gone i will not leave her yet since out of justice we must challenge nothing i'll call it mercy if you'll pity me you heavenly powers and lend me some few years the blessed soul to this fair seat again no comfort comes the gods deny me too i'll bow the body once again aspatia the soul is fled for ever and i wrong myself so long to lose her company must i talk now here's to be with thee love he stabs himself enter servant this is a great grace to my lord to have the new king come to him i must tell him he is entering he sees the bodies oh heaven help help enter lysippus melantius Calianax, cleon diphilus and strato where's our mentor oh there there how strange is this what should we do here 
these deaths are such acquainted things with me that yet my heart dissolves not may i stand stiff here for ever eyes call up your tears this is a mentor heart he was my friend melt now it flows a mentor give a word to call me to thee oh melantius calls his friend a mentor oh thy arms are kinder to me than thy tongue speak speak what that little word was worth all the sounds that ever i shall hear again oh brother here lies your sister slain you lose yourself in sorrow there why diphilus it is a thing to laugh at in respect of this here was my sister father brother son all that i had speak once again what youth lies slain there by thee tis aspatia my senses fade let me give up my soul into thy bosom what's that what's that aspatia i never did repent the greatness of my heart till now it will not burst at need my daughter dead here too and you have all five new tricks to grieve but i never knew any but direct crying i am a prattler but no more he draws his sword and makes to stab himself hold brother stop him the courtiers disarm melantius fie how unmanly was this offer in you does this become our strain i know not what the matter is but i am grown very kind and am friends with you you have given me that among you will kill me quickly but i'll go home and live as long as i can his spirit is but poor that can be kept from death for want of weapons is not my hand a weapon good enough to stop my breath or if you tie down those i vow a mentor i will never eat or drink or sleep or have to do with that that may preserve life this i swear to keep look to him though and bear those bodies in may this a fair example be to me to rule with temper for on lustful kings unlooked for sudden deaths from heaven are sent but cursed is he that is their instrument Exeunt. end of act 5 end of the maid's tragedy by francis beaumont and john fletcher